Okay, right, here we are. Zone 414. Listen, I'm a big fan of sci-fi films, but even, even more so, I love I love neo-noir. I love that that whole genre. And this really reminded me almost of like an anime in a, in a lot of ways, where where you got these bright, I mean, you got you got these uh, you know, the, these sci-fi elements to it, but I absolutely love the film and, and the scope of it. Uh, what were some of the themes about Brian Edward Hill, Brian Edward Hill's script that made you jump the project? Well, I mean, just I think generally the, the the whole question about us as human beings, you know, of, uh, the the question or the idea that we are constantly dealing with our feelings and we are either trying to avoid our feelings or we're trying to understand our feelings and that our feelings are so often driving how we function in the world and that in this sort of very modern day and age with modern technology we're able to more and more avoid our feelings if we can and so you know and as an actor I mean feelings are our bread and butter so you know I'm, I'm very tuned into my feelings and I have to sort of be analyzing them all the time but of course I even I um, uh, will even inadvertently sometimes avoid my feelings or, and it won't be till later that I'll think wow, I wasn't very honest about that. I, I, I acted like I was sort of stronger when really I was more vulnerable or whatever it might be. And so I think as a whole, that's what the film is looking at. Sure. And, and the beauty is that it's sort of set in this world where you've got a character who shouldn't have any feelings because she's a robot. She's an android. She's there to purely please other people, but something's gone awry and she's tapped into something and, and is is kind of wanting to feel more human is wanting to actually you know experience these feelings uh, and then you have another character mine and the various other ones in the film who who are doing everything they possibly can to sort of keep them at bay so and and feelings as we know are a really precarious delicate kind of um, ephemeral quality because they can come and go our assessment of them can be mixed um, we can be thrown off guard by them. We can make mistakes because of them. We can hurt people. We can hurt ourselves because of them. So they're really powerful sort of, uh, it, it, you know, it's a, our emotions are a really sort of powerful part of who we are. I just think that the, the script really captured that beautifully in this sort of amazing setting about modern technology, about androids, et cetera. So it was just a really interesting story as soon as I read it, you know. You know, it's interesting because every single role that you choose, you really bring that character to life. I mean, obviously it starts on a page, but you go deep into that character where I feel that like, like I've told you before, I feel like I forget that I'm watching you a lot of times. And this is one of those times too. And this is even with like, you didn't have like prosthetic, like, you know, like, like prosthetics on or anything like that. It was you, but I completely lost that it was you. So when you're developing a character like David Carmichael, uh, can you talk to me about about where that starts and how you build that character out? Well, the funny thing is, I I don't feel like I I generally don't feel like I do any work to build a character. It's purely my response to what I read. You know, it's it's that I it's that I I really have a sort of an immediate. It's like when you read a book and you and you're taken to another world and you can see that other world in your head and you go, well, I'm in that other world. I kind of go, well, I'm in the world of this character and, and it might make me morph and it might make me sort of move in different ways and create a different voice. And obviously there are technical things that I'll go, okay, I've got to figure this out and I've got to figure that out. But generally, generally it, it, it triggers in me a kind of a, um, a, a placement like my emotional placement lands somewhere, my energy lands somewhere, my forward thrust, my anxiety goes somewhere, my strength goes somewhere, and, and without me even doing any work. And then before you know it, there's the guy that I'm playing. Do you know what I mean? So Absolutely. I sort of, I love actually being surprised by what a script will do to me. And, and there are times when I go too far or I, I need to refine things or, you know, because I go, well, I've really found the voice, but I'm sure this guy would move differently to this and I'm just not finding it yet. So there are times when I have to, you know, work on stuff. But, the, you know, I feel like 70, 80% of it 
occurs when I read something and go, oh, wow, oh, let's go do this right now, you know? Right, right. You know, that actually leads perfectly into my next question because uh, writer Brian Edward Hill, he's phenomenal. Um, and he wrote one of my favorite comic stories called Postal, which is very character driven. And I really enjoyed David's character development in Zone 414 because there isn't a specific moment where you're spoon fed kind of like his personality or his past. It was really through the story and the storytelling um, that we find out more about the character's past and history. Can you talk to me a little bit about, about that and who David is as a character? Well, I, I love that because I, I love the fact that, you know, when you've got an audience member sitting there in a cinema or these days, you know, looking at their phone, whatever the version of the, the, the screening may be, they're invest, there's an investment that occurs. And so I'm always asking myself now, what's the least amount I can do? What's the least amount I can say or tell that gives an audience some sense of who this character is? Because I know that audience member is, is wanting to find out who these characters are. So I, and, I, so, and of course, I, I never want to overact. And I think us as actors can overact sometimes. We really think that we have to do everything in order to be truthful about who the character is. But the reality is the audience member projects so much onto the character anyway. So you could really just, you could really move through a film and really give, not give nothing, but seemingly give nothing and just the slightest little hints. And when, when Matilda's character starts to question me about my past or she, she starts to announce to me that she knows my personal file and that she starts talking about my dead wife, you know, it's a very simple, but it's a really clever way of um, filmmaking at that point where the camera's close on me and she's in the background just sprouting all this stuff. And I'm just there going, oh, my God, oh, my God, she knows everything. About, you know, oh, my God. So it's a private moment. And it's those private moments that I think are the real. Um, and, 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 and Brian, you know, that's how the script was sort of written as well. You know, we, I can't remember exactly the wording, but it would be something to the effect of, you know, we, we, we move further in, inside David's head as she, you know, interrogates him with everything she knows. And so you, you, you see how it should be played out. Sure. And, and so I think he did a beautiful job of that, that intimacy. I mean, it's a very intimate film. It's a very, yeah. I don't want to say it's a small film, but it, but but there's a lot of just one on one, two people talking to each other. It's sort of cat and mouse, really yes. kind of skill. You never kind of know who's gonna, you know. Which, funnily enough, I mean, if you look at Alien, for example, as a wonderful sci-fi film, you know, we know that on many levels that's really just a sort of a haunted house film. It just happens to be right. set in a spaceship. But you've got these great conversations just between two people. But it's the ominousness. Yes. That is in the room that you go, oh my God, something bad's going to happen. Something really bad's going to happen. And I think in our film, a similar kind of version where you just know that there are emotions under the surface. Exactly right. That she's, that Matilda's like desperately wanting to feel something and David's desperately not wanting to feel something. And so that kind of tension is wonderful. And that's what Brian really captured in his script. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and that's what Andrew really managed to execute. Yeah. Absolutely. And I was just about to talk about Matilda because uh, you work a lot with her in this film and she is phenomenal as Jane. And she plays the role very interesting because it's not necessarily uh, very Android or it's not human, but you could see, like you said, it's the human wanting to like jump out and, and be something, right? And yeah. her character really sets the tone for the film. What did she bring to the role of Jane that just surprised you? Well, I think because I didn't know what she was going to do either. I was like, wow, okay, what, what, what am I, what am I, who am I going to be faced with here? You know, like, what am I going to, what's going to happen? And she, you know, it was great chatting with her. She's a lovely girl and has a great sense of humor and really was like, okay, what am I going to do? Like, I could, I could fully go down this road or I could fully go down that road. And Andrew was very clear about wanting her to just seem very human. He didn't want somebody who was robotic in there, you know. Because, again, the audience is already projecting that onto her. The audience is already going, she is a robot, she is a robot, she is a robot. So for her just to be human and be normal and, and, and particularly to be sort of vulnerable and be going, I just want to feel something, I want to be allowed to feel something, you know, which, again, in this day and age, lots of people are doing the opposite. Exactly right. I think a lot of people could relate to that, you know. So she, 
she brought a real sensitivity. She brought a real vulnerability. She brought great humour. I mean, you don't necessarily see it in the film, but on set, she was really lovely and funny. Um, and we had a great time together, you know, and, and we would make jokes about, about, you know, about what it was we were making. You know, she's like, I think you're the fucking robot. I'm not the robot. Look at you. <laughs> fucking robot. You know, so there was a lot of that sort of talk on set. It was great fun. That's amazing. Now, another person that it's almost unrecognizable in this uh, film is Travis Femmel. Like, I, I was blown away. I didn't even know it was him that he was in the film until uh, until a little bit later. And I was like, oh, my gosh, that I had no clue. So can you talk to me about working with Travis and, and just him, just his persona in this film? Well, I think he was wonderful. I mean, and he's wonderful in the film. And if clearly he's got a lot going on with, with makeup, as you know. And that and that that stuff can be, you know, really not problematic, but it can be like, okay, where is this gonna work? Is this like, not gonna work? A little restricting, maybe? Well, not so much restricting, it's just whether or not it takes you out of the movie. But uh, the reality is, you know, I mean, he 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 kept referencing Mickey Rourke. You know, and, and we look at Mickey Rourke and go, wow, what has he done to himself? And on many levels, Travis, you know, who was a, was a very, is a very beautiful looking guy. He was a model and he's extremely handsome, you know, incredible looking guy who on many levels, I think wanted, to, not that Mickey Rourke probably wanted to do this, but, you know, Travis really wanted to play against all that, but at the same time, maintain the vanity and and just look like a, 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 a kind of a um, you know a, a series of plastic surgery operations that had kind of gone wrong, and that we see that so often in this world. Again, you know, it taps into that whole idea that you know if I if I don't if I don't allow my emotions to to come to the surface, and I can just keep doing this to myself, and this to myself, and this to myself, and this to myself, then then I will be who I want to be instead of having my emotions dictate who I am. And yet, from the outside, we look at them and go, "You look like a crazy person." Use this kind of look as somebody who he, he himself was avoiding his emotional states. You know, and as we know, there are plenty of people out there who have had lots of plastic surgery who are clearly putting up masks to some degree, you know. So that also taps into the whole question and the whole idea that our emotions, they frighten us, you yeah. know. Absolutely. Well, look, guy, I know you got to run because you got a lot going on today, but look, I appreciate your time. The film's absolutely brilliant. And look, I want to I want to cover every movie you do, man, because I feel like it's like a an insight into into characters that you tell me about and 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 just the the filmmaking process uh, that you see it through is, is amazing but thank oh, you well, so much for your time guy. an absolute pleasure good to talk to you again i know we've spoken before so good to talk to you again we'll have a few it's a couple of films that i've done in this past sort of 12 months so we'll no doubt be talking about those when they come out so good to see you again absolutely i can't wait to chat